In this chapter, we're going to talk about refraction. And before we get into the specifics of how to implement refraction in the code, I thought it would be useful to talk over the, the theory behind refraction and talk about what's actually happening uh, so that you can see that when we get to the code part. Refraction is the effect of light being bent when it passes from one translucent medium to another. For example, if light is traveling through air, and it hits the surface of water. As it enters the water, the light rays are bent. This also works the other way. If light originates in the water, and it passes as it passes out of the water, uh, the light rays are bent. So anytime light goes from one kind of a substance that it's traveling through into another substance, the rays are bent, and that's what we call refraction. So, how do we do this in HLSL? Well, let's jump in here. I'm in Effects Composer. I've opened the shader called Chapter 4 Start. And if you'll notice, this is exactly where we left off in Chapter 3 when we were talking about uh, using reflection to make metal. So we'll come down here to the part of our shader where we are actually doing uh, the, ref uh, the reflection. We're going to create a new section right here for our refraction. So I'm going to call this, or we're just going to put in a comment. So what we want to do is create a refraction vector. So here we created a reflection vector uh, by using the reflect intrinsic function with our view vector and our normal. We're going to do something really similar to that. So I'm going to say create the refraction vector and fetch the refraction. Now the nice thing about refraction is we can use the same exact cube map sampler just like we use our cube map sampler here uh, to get our reflection. We can use this same cube map with refraction. So the first thing that we need to do is create the vector. So I'm going to say Float 3, refract vector equals, and just like reflect, there's a very handy built-in intrinsic function, which you can probably guess, it's refract. So what are we going to refract? Well, uh, in this case, we, we have a trans, uh, transparent or translucent object. We're going to make our, make our teapot looks like, look like it's made out of uh, crystal or glass so that we can see through it to what's on the other side. And so we need, if we're looking through the teapot, we need to refract the view vector or the I vector, and we need the normal. In this case, we're going to use the negative surface normal. And the refract intrinsic function takes one more parameter, and I need to kind of explain what this parameter is. It takes the refraction index of the first medium divided by the refraction index of the second medium. Now, you can read up on refraction indices uh, on Wikipedia, for example, but what I've done is I've opened up Wikipedia to a handy list of indices of refraction. So here we see that air has a refraction index of 0 0.000293. So I'm going to copy that. And here we need to put whatever the refraction index is of the material that we're passing into. So our light is going from the I vector into uh, whatever this is made out of. So I could hard code this value. Let's bring up our list again. If we come down here, I could say, well, maybe our teapot's made out of diamond, or maybe it's made out of water. So let's just start out by hard coding this value. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put it in here. So we're passing refraction, our view vector, the negative normal, and also uh, the refraction index of air divided by the refraction index of water. So those are the three values that we need to calculate our refraction vector. 
Well, what do we do with it now? Well, first thing is we've called this a float three, so we need to make sure that we're only returning x, y, z. Okay, so now that we have our refraction vector, uh, just like we did with reflection where we swizzle things because max is z up and y negative, we also need to do that with our refract vector. So I'm going to say refract vector equals negative refract vector dot x, z, y. So we're negating and swapping the y and the z components uh, to accommodate uh, the differences that max has. And we're also going to flip just the z refract vector equals negative refract vector dot z. And now, now that we've built the reflection or the refraction vector that we need, we can use it to look up our cube map. So we'll say float four refracted color equals text cube. And we can use the same reflect map sampler here that we used before. And we're going to use the refract vector to look up the cube map value. And just like we did with our reflection, we're going to multiply our refraction times 5 just to kind of punch it up. OK, so there we have our refraction color. So just to see how we did, we're going to copy this, come down to the bottom, and instead of returning this, we're going to return our refracted color. And I'll save that here, come over to max, and it'll update. And it looks like we're doing something wrong. So let's double check to see what we've done. That's not quite right. All right, so up here, where I say refract vector equals negative refract vector dot z, what I actually meant to do is refract vector dot z equals negative refract vector dot z. So we're only flipping the z component, not the entire thing. So we'll save that and update it again. And now we have a teapot that looks refractive. So if we spin it around, it looks kind of like it's made out of crystal. And you can sort of vaguely make out some details of what's going on behind the teapot. Now this is all fine if you only want your teapot to ever look like this, or to only have this particular refraction quality to it. And what I really want to do is make this a little bit more flexible by exposing this value to the user so that they can make their object have whatever index of refraction they would like. So what I'm going to do is come up here to the top of the shader uh, to right here where it says reflection blur. We're going to add in a new parameter. And this one's going to be called uh, re refraction index, right? And we need to make it into a slider. String UI widget. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to copy this one to make it easier. I'm going to call it refraction index. And the minimum is 0. We'll leave the maximum at 10. The UI step. Actually, no. We want to make the minimum 1. Get some strange results if you go below 1 with refraction indices. The UI max we're going to call 5. And we'll make the UI step 0 0.01, just so we can get a little bit more sensitivity out of it. And for the label on our material, we're going to call this index of refraction. And we're going to default this to 1.33, which is water. All right. I'm going to save that. Now, you won't 
see any updates over here because I haven't actually applied um, this parameter to the shader code yet. But if I bring up the material panel, you see that I'll now I now have a value called index of refraction. So let's jump back here to the shader, and I'm going to copy uh, this name and come down here. And instead of 1.3330, we're going to divide by our refraction index value. So I'll save that. Come over here. I'm going to zoom in on my teapot so you can see what's happening. So index of refraction is 1.33 right now. I'm going to change it to 1. And now you can see that my teapot is like perfectly transparent. So it's not refracting at all, basically. I'm just looking straight through it right at the back of the, my house in my backyard. Uh, if you look over here, there's the apartments behind my house. Anyway, so this is what the teapot would look like uh, if it was doing no refraction at all. So I can come over here and just kind of slowly slide this up to get just the right amount of refraction. Okay, so that's it. Refraction's pretty simple. Basically, we're just using the intrinsic function uh, refract to calculate the refraction ve vector, and we're feeding it the view vector and the negative normal, and also uh, the indices of refraction that we're beginning with, which is air, divided by the index of refraction of the object that we're penetrating. Now, just one little note here. Um, if you wanted to optimize this and get rid of this extra division, you could change this value to just be uh, pre-divided. So for example, um, if we just do this math, 1.000293 divided by 1.33, for example, we could hard code that, or we could make our index of refraction, instead of being the real index, we could make it be the pre-divided value. And that would save us uh, one instruction. However, you'd need to teach your artists that were using this shader uh, how to do that math. So for example, if we look here in Wikipedia again, uh, and we look at this nice list, the way the shader is set up now, I can just punch in the values from the list right here and get the property of that object immediately. But if I do that optimization, where I've already divided it, uh, when I enter those values, I would have to divide that myself beforehand, kind of translate this into what I was actually looking for. So that's one optimization uh, if you're willing to put up with doing a little bit of calculation yourself beforehand. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is that this refraction is uh, quite simplified from what's actually happening in reality. Because we're only doing light transferring from your eye into the object, and it's being refracted once. Whereas in reality, um, the light would be entering into the teapot and being refracted once, and then being refracted again when it exited the teapot. Uh, so for simplicity and for speed of, of creating the, uh, our object, um, just like with most things that, are, that happen in shaders, we're leaving a lot of the reality out and just kind of hinting or simulating or faking the effect. Um, and the simplification of it allows it to have uh, a quick rendering speed, uh, trading off the uh, absolute accuracy or absolute quality uh, for rendering speed. So that's the property of refraction that some translucent objects have. In the next chapter, we're going to talk about how to combine reflection and reflection, refraction using something called a Fresnel term. So that's in the next chapter.